please, please stand. Many thanks. A reminder too that after the ceremony, all prize winners and Fano are invited to share a light supper in the library and have their photograph taken in room 110, which is directly opposite the library, as individuals, groups, and with Fano if you'd like. Tonight we see several types of academic awards given out. Attainment awards are awarded for significant effort and or achievement in a subject. Service awards are for students who have demonstrated reliable, dedicated service to an aspect of college life outside their timetable classes. Many of these were already given out at our Merit Assembly. Those students receiving attainment and service awards tonight are either three, winning three or more, or they are receiving other awards as well. Outstanding achievement awards are for exceptional academic performance in a subject. Only sm a small percentage of students can earn an outstanding achievement. First in class awards are for the top performing students in a subject. Some students have trophies or prizes for their top student instead. Some students will earn a principal's award for academic excellence. This is for students who have earned not only a lot of excellence credits, but a high proportion of all their credits at excellence level. Students earning this award have all demonstrated extremely hard work high academic ability and dedication to achieving outstanding academic success in all these subjects. Finally, our special awards celebrate a range of different achievements, from sport to service, from cultural achievement to academic success. <coughs> these include a range of scholarships with a combined value of nearly $100,000. We will also celebrate Dean's Awards, appoint next year's House Leaders, celebrate our Year 13 Leaders, and we'll find out the makeup of our student executive 
of 2021, including finding out who will follow in our illustrious footsteps as its students. <laughs> Please welcome the Blackfield College Board of Trustees Chairperson, Mr. Gareth Marshall. Good evening. What a year, 2020, eh? Um, I just want to say thank you to our senior leadership team and our staff who have just done a phenomenal job this year at leading through uncertainty and we already had some big changes planned for the start of the year but no one would have known this time last year what we would have gone through so please from my heart senior leadership team thank you for how you have led our school this year through you know that the ministry of education was sending out book long memos every night telling what needed to be done the next day and what needed to change and as you all know, living through lockdown, it's, the rules were changing every day. So thank you for what you did. To our staff, thank you for all you've done. Having to change and get into online learning and doing all of that. Hey, we know that you are fatigued. We know that you're tired. We know that you've worked your butts off. And um, you know the report that came to the board last, last week sort of just predicting what our academic achievement is going to be like for Waipehu this year. Phenomenal effort. Phenomenal effort from the staff, phenomenal effort from you, the students, and um, well done. We really do appreciate it, considering the media reports you've seen around that. So we're excited at what, how our staff have performed and what they do, and that's a true testament of the community feel that we have at Waipahu College. Thank you to my fellow board members. We had a first this year. We did our first board meeting over Zoom, like many other people around the world. Hey, we must prefer being face to face. And um, I just want to share a couple of lessons I've learned from this, this year. And that's the first one, is community is so important. No one likes to be isolated. We need that face to face connection and we need to be part of something bigger than ourselves. And as I've said many times on this stage, success is not an individual feat. You need to get good people around you to make you successful. And a little secret that I've found in life, if you help others become successful, you've got a better chance of being successful yourself. Our success is always linked to others. Find good people in your community to link yourself to. Another secret is make it multi-generational. We need to know where we've come from. We need to understand and respect our elders and understand the challenges they've been through. But we also need to look forward and, lead and, and learn from where they've been and use it as a launching pad to somewhere new that we can go and a brighter future than what has been before us. But we can't go forward and we, when we don't know where we've been because we might end up being back where we came from without knowing it. Dream big. Have your destination in mind. Know where you want to get to. But as I said last year, Big dreams aren't very helpful if they don't give you the motivation to make the first step. On your GPS, you can't remember all of the instructions. It just tells you how to get to the next corner. The journey is the important part, not the destination. Don't be afraid of the detours and the scenic routes, because I've found in my life it's in, on those detours, it's going down the scenic route that actually the world opens up and you discover things that you might have missed if you're in a hurry to get to your destination. And that's where the real richness and joy of life is, is in the, in the scenic route. Don't be afraid when things don't go to plan. I remember going to a, a school trustees um, event and we had the Vice Chancellor of Otago University and she asked the audience of, of school trustees, how many people here are doing what they thought they would do when they left school? And two people put up their hand, both were farmers. <laughs> it's not a failure not to be what you want when you leave school, because as you learn and as you go on that journey, the world opens up. And I don't regret one day of my life, but none of it has been what I thought I'd do when I finished school. And I have no regrets, even the hard days and even the, the lessons that I've learned that have been challenging. The de destination is important, but don't be scared to change the route. Don't be scared to change where you're going because you find something better or your purpose 
changes from what you thought. Never be scared. Recently, I, I was watching a leadership talk and, and the, the gentleman said, to, to lead out of the dip, there's one thing that he had to do. He had nine points, so I'm not going to bore you with that. But the one that really struck me is don't be scared to unmake a promise. And it's not lack of integrity, but if the promise you made in the past is hindering you from getting to a better future, don't be scared to unmake that promise. Have your destination in mind, but take the scenic route. It is far more exciting. And my last point is passion or your purpose is not found in the cloud. It's built by going through the scenic route and going through your life experiences. You will build it bit by bit. Small good decision by small good decision, staying very curious, which is what learning is, is just being curious and asking lots and lots of really good questions. So make the small decisions, make them well. Every good small decision leads to a much better great big decision, and I am confident that you will be successful. So for our cohort that are leaving, and this is your last hurrah tonight, I look back at this time, take the opportunities that our school has presented, and I know there are many, but don't let that limit you. Look for other opportunities. Take your life destination. Take it down paths. Open your eyes to the world because your future is incredibly bright no matter what the media say. So thank you all. Tonight will be a good night. Thank you, Gary. I would now like to invite our principal, Mr. Mark Robertson, to de deliver his principal's address. E apu nui, e apu rahi, e raurangatana maa, e nga mawahiri, e nga matua, e nga whai, whaia, e nga whana. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Biki mai, kaki mai ki tēnē tāmata, whakanui o te kura tuarua o Waipanu. Ko mā Provinson toko ingoa, nō reira, nō mai hai mai. Distinguished guests, His Worship the Mayor Bernie Wandon, uh, Member of Parliament Teresa Ngobi, Members of the Board of Trustees at Mua Pupu Tribal Authority, staff, parents, fellow principals, uh, friends and most importantly, our students. I offer you a very warm welcome to Prize Giving 2020, where we are gathered to celebrate the many successes of our senior students and to also farewell our graduating Year 13s. A huge congratulations to all our award winners this evening and a massive thank you to our award presenters and sponsors for the generous support they provide by way of scholarships and prizes. I began last year's prize giving address by celebrating some amazing NCEA results and once again, as you've heard from the board chair, our 2020 NCEA results are tracking at record levels despite the interference of COVID-19. In fact, however you choose to measure success, whether it be academic, in sport, through culture, or engaging in a meaningful way to further training or employment upon leaving school, we remain strong. I would like to take this opportunity to thank, on your behalf, our fabulous Board of Trustees. Kirsten McKenzie, John Nicholson, Catherine Tate, Dave Stabbs, Gritch Lois, Jackie Cairns, the lovely Fanotti, Hecky New, and the Board Chair, Gareth Marshall. The Board have an unswerving passion for Waipenu College, and they are committed to providing high-quality governance for our community. We are hugely indebted to you all. Tonight is a time of celebration, an occasion where we see the results of all the hard work that got our amazing students to this point. It is also a time of thanks, where we acknowledge all those who have helped make graduation a reality for each member of the Year 9 class of 2016. Inevitably though, the end of the school year brings some farewells to departing staff, and I would like to acknowledge uh, the following people at this point. So firstly, I would like to wish Mrs. Sarah Anoka all the very best with her study leave next year, but don't worry, she's not technically leaving as she will be back in 2022. And we look forward to welcoming Saar Kaur, who is picking up digital technology for us next year. I would next like to acknowledge Mariana Collette, who has worked with us this year both as a part-time librarian <coughs> and as a teacher in Poi Poya, our team parent unit. She has proved to be a really popular figure amongst all our students and staff, and we wish her well for the future. Tamsin Isaac joined us in August 2018 directly from the UK as a teacher of hard materials metal. 
She has worked with the technology team to transform the metal workshop, as well as implement brand new courses as part of our new curriculum. It is no coincidence that students have been opting for her courses and electives in large numbers, and she will be sorely missed by us all. I think it's fair to say that COVID has had a part to play in her decision to return home to be closer to family and friends, and we wish her all the very best for the future. Thank you, Tamsin, for the inspirational contribution you have made to Wyfang College. Lex Hansen has been a core part of our learning support team since 2012. She's one of the kindest and the most caring people I have met, and she will always go out of her way to do anything for her students. Working in Tefali Afina for one day each week has been a real joy for her over the last couple of years, and although she may not be here quite as often next year, we are sure to see her as a reliever from time to time. Thank you, Lex, for your amazing work, and we wish you all the very best. We expect next farewell, Sarah Ryan, who has been a member of the Waipahu family since joining us in 2013 from Sport Waikato. She is universally loved by her students for her total commitment to their learning, but also to their whole order and overall, overall well-being. Sarah has taught a wide range of subjects in her time here, as well as giving countless hours of dedicated voluntary service to netball and hockey teams during her eight years. Sarah is now moving back to the Waikato with her family to take up a new role as education advisor, again with Sport Waikato. As I said at our sports and performing arts evening, maybe the cycle will repeat itself in a few years and we can welcome you back, Sarah. The door will always remain open for you. And finally, I would like to acknowledge Mrs. Anne Stout, head teacher of Poipoya, who is retiring this year. Anne started at Waipahu College back in 1994 as a reading recovery teacher, and by the end of 2020, she will have given 27 years of dedicated service to this school and community. That, by any measure, is an incredible achievement. Anne has grown an amazing culture built around the concept of Whakapirinatangi in Poipoya, and she is loved, valued, and respected by us all. The girls in Poipoya describe Anne as having enduring presence, that she holds the line of expectation. She is holistic, she values and acts on feedback, she knows herself, and most importantly, she truly cares. There can be no greater accolade. And you leave with our aloha and very best wishes for your well-deserved retirement. Could we give all our departing staff a huge <laughs> continues to go from strength to strength in all areas despite the complexity of 2020. We have all faced significant complications, particularly with COVID-19. I can probably sum this up in one sentence. There are best laid plans, and then there is 2020. <laughs> Basically, every plan we have put in place uh, this year has been affected in some way by COVID. This could have been viewed as a negative, but in fact, it's not been all bad. It has actually presented a different way of thinking. New opportunities have been designed and implemented. We have all engaged in new ways of working, and we have all definitely reprioritised one of the most important things in our lives. I think the challenge we have moving forward is ensuring we continue to use these new learnings in the hustle and bustle of life as it returns slowly to normal. It would be a lost opportunity for us as a school and a community if we do not take our new priorities and learnings forward with us. I saw a quote recently that also helps to sum up 2020 quite nicely, and it goes, I thought 2020 would be the year I got everything I wanted. Now I know 2020 is the year I appreciate everything I have. When we really think about what we appreciate the most and what is most important to us all, we straight away think about the people in our lives that really matter to us. I am in an incredibly privileged position as a principal as I have hundreds of people in my life who really mean a great deal to me. Obviously, there is my immediate family, my wife, Jo, and my very nearly fully grown up children, Matt and Charlie. In fact, for those of you who may not be aware, I am also a very proud dad tonight, as I'll be celebrating Charlie's graduation after five wonderful years together here at Pendulum. These people and our wider family and friends who are also here tonight may be at the centre of my life. However, as a principal, I have a wide range of diverse groups of people who are extremely important to me and that I can influence positively or negatively on almost a daily basis. Our 630 amazingly talented and unique students are always at the forefront of my mind. In every action or decision I make as a principal, I always ask myself the same question. 
How is this adding value to an individual student or to the collective student body? And we have amazing students here at Whitehaven. They are thoughtful, passionate, sometimes loud, quiet, honest, funny, empathetic, energetic, sometimes too energetic, loyal and totally unique. Each student contributes in their own way to the tapestry and layers of our school. And I would like to thank each and every one of you for your unique contribution in 2020. Without you all, our school just would simply not be the same. The next group of people who really matter to me as a principal are our staff. We have a very special group of people here at Wyoming College who, whether they know it or not, are all people who really matter to me. They really matter to our students and they really matter to our wider community. Our staff in each of their areas right across the school have been incredible in what can only be described as a challenging year. As you'll be aware, we have embarked on some, some significant changes to our curriculum this year, and I would like to pay tribute to the way our teaching and support staff have embraced this with open arms. At all points, they have demonstrated an incredible mix of determination, passion, professionalism, patience, and persistence. They have once again weaved their magic and influenced students' lives for the better. The things I value the most about the staff at Waipahu are their unwavering optimism, positivity, and genuine care for each and every young person. They just get on and do what needs to be done. And for this, and for all your work this year, I sincerely thank you. I would also just personally like to thank our fabulous senior leadership team, Guy Reichenbach, Alison Spencer, and Henry Collett. The sense of family that we have here at YPA, who continues to be driven by the inclusive and highly relational leadership from this amazing team, and I'm indebted to you all for all that you do, day in and day out, to ensure our students get the very best education possible. No one else really gets to see and appreciate, appreciate the work you all put in behind the scenes, the pace at which you have to complete that work, and the unwavering dedication you all have to doing what is best by our students. Thank you for all that you do, and a special thanks also to Henry, to Sarah Ryan, and the wider team for masterminding this prize giving ceremony today. You have all done an outstanding job. I also want to thank the person with possibly the hardest job in the school, as she is the person who gets to work the closest with me. And that, of course, is Carol Shaw. For those who don't know, Carol, along with all our support staff, are the glue that holds our school together. There are not enough adjectives in the English language to describe what an amazing person Carol is, but what I can say is that Carol is one of the most dedicated, loyal, supportive people that I have, the, I have had the privilege of working with. This year, Carol has been sprinting from early January and has not stopped. She has been instrumental in steering the school through COVID, securing additional property funding, running all the school finances from term four, designing student reports, helping with the new free and healthy school lunches project, and the list goes on and on and on. Carol doesn't necessarily like to be made a fuss of, but her efforts this year have been simply outstanding. And it is only right that you are acknowledged for the key role you play in allowing our students to succeed. After 23 years at YPA, you are excited to announce that Carol will be taking on a new role of business manager from 2021, where her considerable skills will see her leading on all aspects of finance, property, and HR. It also means that she might get a break from me for a while, which probably isn't a bad thing. But could I please ask Carol to come up on stage now and receive a small token of my appreciation. This is a complete surprise, so I'm probably going to be uh, really in the hot water tomorrow. executive leadership team along with our house leaders have stepped up brilliantly this year and I know we all look forward to being introduced to our new student leaders later on this evening. At this point I would like to thank current head students Georgia Edwards and Carter McLean, deputy head students Callum Mitchell and Brianne Fui Ono, as well as Sally, Kate Rowan, Kate Nicholson, Catherine, Lucas, Ange, Charlie, 
Michaela Vasami and Queenie, our student exec for 2020. You have all given an incredible amount of dedicated service to the school, not just this year, but during your total time here. Do not underestimate the influence and impact you have on our young people here at Waipahi. And in a year where your leadership style has had to adapt and change, you have stepped up and you have delivered. My personal and heartfelt thanks to you all. I do want to particularly recognise the outstanding service of our head students, Carter and George. They have led their school with pride, and their total commitment to making a difference for students, for the wider community, and to the school environment has simply been outstanding. I know it has been really hard this year to see so many events you were leading having to be cancelled or postponed, and it would have been really easy to have lost your passion for leadership. However, you did just the opposite. You recognised that sometimes leadership opportunities just present themselves in different ways. You took on the challenge of leading the student body through COVID and its after effects, and you have been inspirational to us all. You are both one of a kind, and if I could bottle you both and replicate you, I would. As a token of our appreciation for everything you guys have done this year and during your time at YPAU, please would you accept these Paola with our love and best wishes. If I can just ask George and Carter to step forward, please. brings some exciting challenges, not least of which is our new free and healthy school lunches programme. This is a government funded scheme that will see every student provided with a free and healthy school lunch, all prepared daily here on site. We are just about to appoint a new catering manager to oversee the programme, and this will go hand in hand with a ministry funded $300,000 redevelopment of our school kitchen and canteen space. Students will then be involved through their courses and electives in learning about, designing, creating and giving feedback on healthy lunches. And once the full canteen reopens in term two, we expect to be offering a range of first class, first class healthy lunches for all, as well as building enduring partnerships with local growers and suppliers. It is a really exciting space. Most importantly, tonight is all about the fantastic achievements of our students. Many congratulations to each and every one of you receiving an award. You have all have got one thing in common, and that is you've worked hard and you have reached your goal. I truly believe that success is an attitude. You have demonstrated that and you have been duly rewarded. You should be very proud of your achievements. Thank you also to our parents, caregivers and whanau. You are the unsung heroes who have provided unconditional love, support and encouragement which has enabled your sons and daughters to thrive. Learning is a three-way partnership between school, home and students, and you too are to be congratulated on the achievements we are celebrating tonight. To our new student executive team, whom you will be introduced to later this evening, I want you to begin your journey with the following whakatauki. E hara takotoa i te toa takitani, e nāri te toa taimano. My strength is not that of the individual, but that of the collective. And you guys will be an amazing collective. To our Year 13 students, thank you for all you have given to Waipahu College and you leave with our very best wishes for your future success. Your journey to adulthood is almost over. Those Waipahu values and our sense of family will stay with you forever. Carry them with you always and enjoy the future challenges and opportunities that come your way. Make sure you set off your goals and be sure to chase your dreams. Remember that what lies behind you and what lies before you are tiny matters compared to what lies within you. Be true to yourself always. And finally, thank you to everyone that has contributed to 2020. Thank you to the community for being here and supporting our wonderful students and for everything you all do to make the Horofunur the best place in Aotearoa. I wish you all the very best and have a great evening. Noreda.
evening is a performance by Pacifica students from a Fala Tassi group who will be singing a medley of hymns. So
or beyond expectations academically. They cultivate positive relationships with their peers. They have high attendance and very good classroom record. And they have been involved in the extracurricular life of the school. The recipient of the Year 11 Dean's Award has been described as a real gem. They are reliable, responsible, respectful, show great integrity, is always on task in class. They have 99 percent feelings. They have been involved in college football and earned level one MCA early in term three. And to date, have 117 credits and a two credits off of the merit endorsement. They make really good choices all of the time. They are always in class working hard, demonstrating all of our five values quietly. They show maturity in the choices and decisions they make. The student is quiet and unfailingly positive. The winner of the Year 11 Deans Award for 2020 is Trent Bentley. <laughs> to inspire the next generation of female cricketers. They have coached both hockey and football this year, giving up after school time and Saturday mornings. Always polite, always offering to help, always putting others first. A talented and humble person who deserves recognition. The 2020 recipient of the Year 12 Dean Award is Erin Buckley.
Kearns and Daniela. Congratulations to those winners, next year's leaders and, and Otaki House. The next section of the ceremony is mostly about looking forward to next year. But before the announcement of the 2020 Nga Manukura o Waiopehu, the 2020, 2021 year students and leadership team, we're going to look backwards. Tonight there are more than 70 year 13s finishing their time here at Waiopehu. And for most of us, it only feels like yesterday we were sitting in those same seats, preparing for our first days in Year 9. Unsure about what was ahead of us, with questions raging through our heads, and there's a sense of anxiety you can probably still feel now when you really come to think of it. We can all agree these five years have certainly flown by faster than we could have expected. We've made new friends, created lasting memories, and learnt a lot that will prepare us for the big, wide world ahead. 2020 was an interesting year. Quoting our Prime Minister, the team of 5 million went hard and early and contained COVID-19, which resulted in an eight-week lockdown and caused a lot of uncertainty and anxiety amongst us peers. But it was a time that Pepe Way shone through. And the camaraderie of the year 13s, with exceptional support from teaching staff, we all made it through. What was an interesting few months of online school, or for some of us, an eight week holiday. <laughs> <laughs> but when looking back, you may recall COVID 19 wasn't the first time our school was closed due to a virus. In year nine, we had a mini pandemic of our own, with a measles outbreak, another time of uncertainty that we as students worked through. Although, Mr. Robinson, you're no Jacinda, although maybe right here you might be. <laughs> <laughs> Yourself and the rest of the senior management team 
do an exceptional job at guiding our students through the good and bad times. And for that I thank you. Which leads me on to this, a time to say a quick thanks. Collectively, of course, as a cohort. I know personally how supportive my hardworking mum and amazing grandparents have been at keeping me grounded and on task. Along with many remarkable teachers, there are far too many to name individually that have helped me achieve my goals here at YPU. So yet, dear team leaders, if I could ask you to stand. I want you to turn and face your whanau and teachers and show some appreciation to them for their sacrifices and dedication to you. Thank, thank you guys. You can sit, you can sit down now. That's enough for uh, <laughs> Please don't let that be the only admiration you give to your whanau and teachers. I encourage you, if you haven't already, to make sure you personally show your gratitude and to thank teachers and whanau alike. They have been the ones who have been by our side and helped us during our time here. It has been an absolute privilege and honour being head boy here at Waikiki College. So I encourage my successor, whoever that is, to embrace the role and the mana that comes with it. I also want to acknowledge Head Girl Carter. Carter has been a great friend of mine since kindy, and it's pretty awesome to be finishing all these years of friendship together, standing here next to you. I wish all, you all the best for whatever the future holds ahead. Finally, Waipehu is an amazing school and a real asset to living. And when looking at my peers in year 13, leaving this evening, Seeing how successful, bright, and driven you all are, it is purely a reflection of the family and the amazing learning environment that is offered here. And I genuinely mean it when I say this, you should all be proud of yourselves. I wish you all leaving tonight the very best on your journey beyond the school gate. The world is truly ours to make it. There is so much more out there in this wide world of ours. Opportunity is just around the corner. The borders will be open soon enough to travel abroad for those eager to branch beyond the homeland. So let Waipehu be the end of this chapter in the continuous story of life, and let the new, even better, more exciting one begin to write itself. Our lives, our adult lives, are just beginning. So kia kaha, all the best, to my teachers and peers alike. As Ronan Keating says, life is a roller coaster. You've just got to ride it. <laughs>
But again, I feel proud that this is the direction that YP was here. 2020 was sometimes blurry for us here on the on the exec. Now, for next year's team, here are a few tips I'd just like to share that this year has, um, given that this year has been anything but normal. I'm calling out how to get your 2020 vision back. <laughs> My first tip is wear your contact lenses or glasses as prescribed. This means doing the right thing, making sure your job gets done, and meeting the criteria of your job description. Number two, consume a healthy balanced diet. Allow yourself to have days off, don't overdo it, take time out for you, and learn to say no when there is too much on your plate. Now my third tip, schedule an annual eye exam. This translates to be organised. Get a planner to make sure you know what's coming up and when things are due. Definitely don't leave things to the last minute, right Mr. Pulley. <laughs> now I hope that, things make, that makes things a little clearer for next year. Good luck and congratulations once again. I'm so excited to see the amazing things that you all achieve. I'd really like to thank the staff here at The Hood. I'm so grateful for the amount of time and effort you've put in to see our students succeed. The success that we are celebrating tonight would not have been made possible without your continuous support. I want to thank the deans, Ms. Ryan and Mrs. Peters for mentoring me and always putting up with us and having an open door policy. Thank you to SLT and in particular Mr. Robinson for taking in our ideas and allowing us to grow in our role. Thank you for always making time for us in your busy schedule and for giving us after a few hiccups in the last week's <laughs> <laughs> Thank you also to our families for supporting us. I know as teenagers we might not always express our gratitude, but I know we all are grateful of the support that you give us along the way, and will continue to as we move into adulthood. Specifically, I want to thank my parents for being the amazing role models they have been, and for allowing me to succeed in ways as an old. And to my right hand man, Jorge, we had high hopes this time last year that we'd be standing next to each other where we are today. I'm so proud of all the work we've accomplished together and I've learned so much from you. I wish you nothing but the best for uni next year and I can't wait to see you back. Moving on can be scary and whether you feel ready or not, it's time we branch out. So the graduating class of 2020 continue to be the funny, connected, opinionated people you are. Whatever journey life may take you on, I hope you all find it success and happiness in the group that you take. I look forward to following your Instagram stories from wherever you are. Let's keep in touch and take away with us the values that have been instilled in us throughout time at Behoop. So, I guess this is it. Taking these last moments together, I'm so proud to be standing alongside you all tonight. Thank you for all the laughs, tears, and memories. I couldn't imagine doing high school without you. Take pride in how far you've come, and it. <laughs> Someone grabs it. <laughs> 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 have faith and have faith you can go. But don't forget to enjoy the journey. Congrats. Right, thanks team. I'll keep you two up here though. Please, if you can stand on the presenter's spot. Carter and George are going to present each of the new student leadership team with their badges and then pass their phone number on to their successors. So, could the whole of next year's Yamanakura student leadership team please gather by the stairs in alphabetical order to not give anything away? That's Sione Aharoka, Elijah Bathin, Toby Bland, Pat Carline, Josh Dowd, Georgia Dustin, Oriana Inoka, Keely Field and Witness, Lavalia Fanotti, Tiaki Hirani, Octavia King. Emiya Podini, Mary Pofari, and Ashley Snow. Right. So our team of student leaders for 2021 will be, firstly, our Board of Trustees Rep, Manukura Manga Kwari, who also received the Darren Hughes Cup for Student Representative on the Board of Trustees, Lavalia Fanotti. Yeah.
Manukura Fakahari or events leader, George Dustin. Sports leaders, come up together please. Toby Bland and Kate Carline. Yaki Putea, Secretary and Treasurer, Secretary and Treasurer, is Keely Fielding Whitmus. <laughs> Our Manukura Fakakako, Media and Communications Leader, is Octavia King. students, Oriana Inoka and Elijah Bethan. Waipuhu College's Outstanding Group of the Year. 
enjoy. Please make your way to the bottom of the stairs and wait until we are pulled up. Ariana Bell, Keandra Tubal, Jordan Jack, Jake Reeves. Ariana Bell, a senior in architecture and the Paper Plus Senior Arts Award. Keandra Tubal, Attainment in Art and English, Outstanding Achievement in Dance. Jordan Jack, Attainment in English and Maths, 
outstanding achievement for technology engineering. Jake Reeves, Attainment in English and Maths, Outstanding Achievement in Digital Technology. Next group, Tyler Broom, Lena Chambers. <laughs> uh, apologies. Next group, Tyler Broom, Lena Chambers, Maya Podony, and Bella Watson. Tyler Broom, Service to Rotary Interact, Attainment in Art and Science, Outstanding Achievement in English. <coughs> Lena Chambers, Outstanding Achievement in Art, English and History. Maya Podony, Attainment in Art, Outstanding Achievement in English, Maths and Science. Bella Watson, Attainment in Dance and Maths, and the Principal's Award for Academic Excellence. Our third group, Taylor Marie Jensen, Sophie Wakefield, Hannah Kearns, and Isabel Montague. Taylor Marie Jensen, Attainment in English, Maths and Science, Outstanding Achievement in History, and the Principal's Award for Academic Excellence. <laughs> Sophie Wakefield, Attainment in Japanese, Outstanding Achievement in English, Maths and Science, and the Principal's Award for Academic Excellence. <laughs> Hannah Kierens, Attainment in Architecture Level 2, English, Japanese, Maths and Science, and the Principal's Award for Academic Excellence. And Isabel Montague, Service to the School Restaurant, Attainment in English, Outstanding Achievement in Architecture Level 2, Physical Education and Science, and the Principal's Award for Academic Excellence. Eli Pratt, Cassidy Bell, Ali Gilford, and Vinetti Fulpa. Eli Pratt, Attainment in Architecture, Outstanding Achievement in English, Maths, Science, and Music at Level 2, and the Principal's Award of Academic Excellence. <laughs> Cassidy Bell, Attainment in English Level 2, Outstanding Achievement in Japanese, Art, Maths and Social Studies, and the Principal's Award for Academic Excellence. <laughs> Ellie Gilford, Outstanding Achievement in Economics, English, Japanese, Maths and Science, and the Principal's Award for Academic Excellence. and Anita Torfa, Attainment in Science, Outstanding Achievement in Architecture, English, Maths and Music at Level 2, the Principal's Award for Academic Excellence, and the Board of Trustees Cup for Academic Excellence in the Year Congratulations to all our Year 11 award winners. We will now move straight into Year 12 Academic Awards. Fire Miss DCS here, our Māori theme will announce the awards. And Miss Sarah Noka, one of our Pacifica teams, will present them.
Gabriel Ray. A time in English, a time in primary nutrition, a time in maths, and a time in physical education. Christine Cullen. A time in sport and leisure studies, catering and hospitality award, and the Mojo Coffee Award. Renee Prodini. Attainment in chemistry, attainment in English, outstanding achievement in social studies, and outstanding achievement in maths. <laughs> and Oriana Inoka. Attainment in chemistry, attainment in English, attainment in maths, attainment in social studies, and outstanding achievement in sport and leisure studies. <laughs> Service to the Science Department, 
Outstanding achievement in chemistry. Outstanding achievement in English. Outstanding achievement in maths. Outstanding achievement in physics. And the Principal's Award for Academic Excellence. Genetics. Attainment in maths. Outstanding achievement in English. Outstanding achievement in food and nutrition. Outstanding achievement in geography. Outstanding achievement in physical education. And the Principal's Award for Academic Excellence. Clearly Fielding with Mass. Service to the Student Council, Attainment in Biology, Outstanding Achievement in Chemistry, Outstanding Achievement in English, Outstanding Achievement in Food Nutrition, Outstanding Achievement in Maths, the Kia Levin Award for Food Nutrition, and the Principal's Award for Academic Excellence. Outstanding Achievement in Health at Level 3, the Principal's Award for Academic Excellence, and the Board of Trustees Cup for Academic Excellence in Year 12. Thank you. 
Sometimes we laugh, sometimes we cry, but I guess you know now. Baby, I took a half and she took the whole thing, slow down. Baby, we took a trip, now we on your block, and it's like a ghost town. Fantastic, what an amazing montage. Now I would like to invite uh, Mr. Guy Rackenbach, our Deputy Principal, to celebrate the 2020 Year 13 leaders. Good evening. I now invite the 2020 leaders to organise themselves for the next parade and ask Mr. Robinson to come forward to present the leaders with their supports.
mid Aaron Rubin.
Thank you, the team. Thank you. Thank you. Now for the Year 13 Academic Awards. They will be read by Ms. Kirsten Brown, Year 13 Dean, and presented by Ms. Katie Peters, who is Dean of Auburn House and Head of English. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Dean. to say congratulations to you all. Couldn't be more proud to say that all you did in you're a bunch of amazing individuals. So awesome. Let's get on with it. Okay. So, um, and just again, just a reminder, just we'll call up a group and then if you hold your applause to the end, that'd be awesome so everyone can hear their family members get their awards. That'd be awesome. So, without further ado, can I please have Luke Cochran, Michaela Conway, Claire Johnson and Zoe Smith. Okay, Luke Cochran, Attainment Biology Level 3, Attainment Business Studies Level 3, Service to the Coffee Hat, Science Department and the Tech Crew. <laughs> Michaela Conway, Service to Rotary Interact, Service to the Board, Attainment in English Level 3, Food and Nutrition, Next with Calculus, and Next with Statistics. Claire Johnson, Service to Rotary Interact, Blackwater House, School Hall, and the Science Department, Attainment in Art, Design Level 3, Attainment in Chemistry, and Attainment in History Level 3. Zoe Smith. Attainment in History, Attainment in Maths with Statistics, Attainment in Physics, Outstanding Achievement in Chemistry Level 3, and Service to the School Library. Yes, Congratulations, guys.
Brodie McGreevy, Attainment in Counting Level 3, Attainment in Dance, Attainment in English, Outstanding Achievement in Business Studies, and Service to All Home House. Jaden Hudaway Morgan, Service to Makaritu House, The Coffee Hat, The Home Economics Department, Attainment in Architecture Level 3, Attainment in Physical Education, Outstanding Achievement in Sports and Leisure Studies, and the Dying Academy Award.
Ed. How's it going? We doing all good? Yeah. So if you're not good, well, you're about to be good because you're about to listen to some Stevie Wonder music. Right. Yeah. So
Achievements to be recognised by the Waiapehu Whānau as well. Lizzie, 
received an excellence award for art and culture. And Kate received an excellent scholarship for academic achievement. Afina Trophy is awarded to a student who has consistently demonstrated our college values. This year's winner is always positive and respectful to others, especially to those who need assistance. He shows great determination in everything he tries and represents our school with pride. His consistent and excellent attitude always reflects our values and makes him a deserving recipient of this award. <coughs> Tori and Bag. optimistic year 13 student. He's demonstrated innovation by developing Scolari, a young enterprise initiative with student well-being at the heart of it. The focus was students helping students, a peer mentoring system. This student has also shown leadership and communication skills beyond his years. The Colbert Cooper Award goes to Callum Richard. Students have given to the college this year. 
There's no skin. <laughs> Carla and George have demonstrated sound leadership by contributing to our college community through active promotion of student activities and projects and by being outstanding ambassadors for the college at official events. Carter and George also jointly received the Student Council Cup for outstanding contribution to the Student Council. They have set an example to next year's leadership team by being a mature, dedicated, essential part of the Student Council and the leadership of the school. Carter McLean and George Edwards. who could have received this award this year. However, the recipient clearly stood out. He has over 95% attendance. He had achieved level two in CEA before the end of term two, and he has continued working hard in class. He currently has over 115 credits. He only needs 72 this year. He has consistently attended the Pacifica STEM study group. He has played volleyball and rugby for the school. He has participated in the Pacifica Cultural Group, where he's been a leader this year, and he's used this opportunity to continue to develop his leadership skills. This young man has truly demonstrated a commitment to the college, and his efforts and attitude this year have made him the winner of the Linda Sherlock Carver Bowl for most outstanding Pacifica all-rounder of 2020. Our new cultural leader, see you on our <laughs> Academically, earning NCA Level 3 and University entrance. 
Next year, he intends to begin studying towards a degree in social services, which is, is a reflection of his caring, supportive nature. Congratulations, Lucas Henson. <laughs> for a student intending to study veterinary science in some form at tertiary level. This year, the scholarship is awarded to a student who is the definition of resilience, determination, grit, and dedication to her studies. That hard work has clearly paid off. She's passed 84% of her credits at merit or excellence level this year. The personification of our pride values, Letitia Jack. and this year's recipient has certainly demonstrated that. She's already received one outstanding achievement award, four first-in-class awards, two subject prizes, and a principal's award for academic excellence. An outstanding student who's described by her teachers as insightful, perceptive, hardworking, honest, and kind, Yasmin Hidani. Tourism Scholarship, which is given to a successful student who plans to study tourism at tertiary level. 
This year's winner has shown dedication, commitment, and focus in tourism studies, as well as a strong desire to work in the tourism industry. Yes, Catherine! Yes, Catherine! The Mercy University Humanities and Social Science Excellence Awards are both worth $1,000 towards the cost of tertiary study. This year's winner for excellence in the humanities is Ann Chase. And for excellence in the social sciences, Friday McLeavy. Prime Minister's Vocational Excellence Award, which recognises the top vocational student in a school with a certificate of excellence and a $2,000 prize. Claire. Not there. Uh, Claire receives the Lara Harding and Elizabeth Kellerman Trust Scholarship, which is worth $2,000. Claire's teachers say she shows initiative, diligence and integrity. Claire is a calm, confident, thoughtful student who has passed 85% of her credits with merit or excellence this year. Congratulations. <laughs> Finley is an outstanding academic student who has been doing some university level study this year alongside NCA Level 3. He receives the Phyllis and Fred Sullivan Scholarship. This is a monetary award to the value of $3,000 to recognise students who demonstrate earnest endeavour, diligence and perseverance, and you've certainly done that. Well done for that. <laughs> Michaela. Michaela receives a Massey University undergraduate scholarship to the value of $5,000. Michaela is a strong academic student who has already received four attainment awards this evening. This year she's earned the majority of her level three credits of merit or excellence. She intends to study education at Massey University with a view to becoming a maths teacher, which we are sure she will excel at. Congratulations. Jorge. <laughs> George. Jorge. He receives a Pricewaterhouse Cooper Scholarship. This includes a monetary award to the value of $7,000 towards his university fees, a tertiary mentor, paid access to business networks, and a summer internship at PricewaterhouseCooper on completion of his degree. And all this for a passionate labor supporter. <laughs> this was one of only five such awards across the country. Congratulations, George, and to all five award winners. Smith, can you come forward? I've got a bit to say about you, so I'll start now. Zoe is a remarkable student. Her teachers describe her as conscientious, thoughtful, hardworking, and kind. This year, Zoe has achieved three quarters of her NCA credit, credits at Merit or Excellence level, including half at Excellence, and has already received one outstanding achievement and three attainment awards. She's committed to pursuing a career in health. Zoe receives the Courage Cup which is awarded to a student who's overcome adversity to achieve high academic results. The Women in Medicine Award provides $2,000 for a female student who will be studying first year health science at university, generously donated by Rachel Price. Finally, Zoe has won a University of Otago Māori Entrance Scholarship with a value of $25,000. <laughs> We farewell our loved ones to Te Reringa Wairua, clapping of the tides of Te Tai Tokoro from Hokianga to Hokioi. Your waka, nga, nga toki mata whaurua, entwines the whakapapa of our waka, kura hopo. You have ascended to the summit of Maunga Tanifa and our Maunga Tararua. We see your sacred home of Ngā Tōi Nui and India. 
special prestige is passed down to you. You're a descendant of esteemed leaders. Walk with pride in your future endeavours. Congratulations, Zoe. Yeah. to present the last five awards. The Ducks Ladorum is awarded to the student who's the widest and most successful range of sporting achievements throughout the year. This year the recipient is a double international, playing in national teams for inline hockey and ice hockey. She was selected for and played senior rep hockey in the New Zealand Women's Ice Hockey League. She's looking forward to studying at Otago University next year and they're looking forward to having her because they've awarded her a $16,000 performance entry scholarship. She already knows who she is, so she could be coming up. She's done this before. <laughs> Sandy Hayward. of her credits at merit or excellence level, 70% at excellence. This evening she has received two attainment and two outstanding achievement awards, a subject prize, a principal's award for academic excellence. She's been a member of Ngamana Kula Student Exec. I won't say what her role was, just to keep the suspense a little bit long. Her teachers describe her as articulate, honest, with a strong sense of social justice. She has initiative and self-management skills, a work ethic, a genuine sense of community responsibility, and is a wonderful role model. Outside of the classroom, she's passionate about sports, football in particular, she can probably start coming up there. And has been an outstanding captain of the girls' first 11. Finally, she's also won a $5,000 Massey University undergraduate scholarship. The Ducks Omnium Studio for 2020 is Ange Hayes. consistently demonstrated the qualities of a responsive and mana enhancing leader. As a year 11, he was appointed by his peers and dean as the youngest ever house leader. He was awarded the Cactus Commander's Award for Leadership in 2017, which recognised his unflinching support to his fellow cadets through the Global Academic Program. He's played significant roles in Kapahaka and Kiorahi over the years, and in 2019, during his year 12 year, he completed a level 4 certificate in Māori Health through Te Wananga o Aotearoa. On top of this, he has smashed NCA level 3 with 121 credits. He has, a cheeky, he has a cheeky sense of humour, but is always respectful and humble. To the recipient, we say, Fire te iti kahurangi ki te tua hukue mehi maunga teitei. Please, please give your congratulations to Jackson McCoy. is one of only two students in year 13 who have earned all their credits at excellence level. 
She's already received five first-in-class awards, two subject prizes, a principal's award for academic excellence, and a $5,000 to head in a rocket scholarship. She intends to study commerce at university and is an outstanding scholar. This year's runner-up to the Ducks is Kate Nicholson. <laughs> She's been ahead of the curve ever since and shows no sign of flattening out anytime soon. She has completed extra study outside of her timetable classes and has recently been sitting more exams than any other Year 13 student. This year she's the only other person to earn all of their credits at excellence level and has received an outstanding achievement for first two subject prizes, a principal's award for academic excellence and the Hotter Fenway Trust Scholarship. She probably said that now. Mr. Alex Van Gelder will also present the Levinis Electrical Award for the value of $1,500. She's off to study medical imaging next year. Fano, can you please stand to congratulate the Ducks of 2020? Yasmin Hedden. <laughs> Oh! 
We'll remain standing, please, for the exit of the official party. Spencer, if you want to leave us out.